Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 664. Two new studies confirm aging men live longer with youthful levels of testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. My practice is BioBalance Health, and today we are going to tell men something they've been waiting for, and that is that testosterone is really good for you. And as you age, when your testosterone starts getting low, you do need to replace it. It will help you live longer. It will help you live healthier. And finally, uh, research has been... um, sent out to all the public, besides just our medical journals, we've had this in our medical journals for years, not that anyone is truly listening, but now there has been a huge study in Australia which defends and suggests that men should be given testosterone as you get older, as your testosterone runs out, it is healthy for you to get your testosterone replaced to prevent the diseases of aging and all the symptoms of low testosterone. It's amazing that they finally sent this to the public and they finally um, sent it to major medical journals where the headline actually says what the article defends. Um, You may have been told by your doctor that testosterone is not good for you, it's dangerous, it's going to cause prostate cancer, all those things are Old news and not actually accurate. The um, publicly, the public has accepted uh, the medical belief that testosterone is bad for men. But now this new research has superseded all of those old beliefs. The study in Australia that had thousands of men involved over multiple many years, and they found that uh, with healthy levels of testosterone, uh, men live longer healthier lives uh, than men with low testosterone. So that's what we've been saying at BioBalance for all the years that I've been practicing, which is 22, that men need testosterone, women need testosterone as well, but today we're talking about men. Um, And we've given our patients evidence of this. We've referred them to different medical journals, articles, research, But the news really didn't get out to the public and didn't get to the major medical journals where practicing physicians were reading them until now. Just in case you haven't been listening to BioBalance for for the last 660 healthcasts, uh, testosterone gives you strong muscles, strong bones, gives you your uh, sexual uh, prowess back. It improves your immune system because immune systems usually get worse as we age. It helps your heart. It makes your heart healthier, your vessels healthier, decreases heart disease, increases lean body mass, decreases weight, decreases your risk of diabetes. And it also makes you look younger. So that's all great. If you're concerned about the aesthetic part of testosterone, then there's something for you. If you're concerned about your heart, there's something for you. But all men have testosterone until about age 55, and as they get past age 55, they ha- their testosterone starts to drop. And as it drops, then symptoms of all of these problems like ED. So ED came up, has been treated with Viagra instead of with testosterone for all these years because it's a drug and it makes a lot of money. So um, I have literally seen men who take ED medicine who still have low testosterone, and there's a problem. They don't have sex drive. The ED drugs like Viagra and Cialis don't help sex drive. 
and you need drive to want to have sex. So men don't seek out sex without sex drive and testosterone is necessary for that. So this, so testosterone, now you don't have to be guilty about going to your doctor and saying, I want testosterone so that I can have sex drive. And maybe you'll need Cialis and testosterone, or maybe you'll just need testosterone. But this is necessary for a man to have a healthy sex drive throughout his life. My goal for treatment in my practice is to keep both men and women healthy throughout their lives, independent and productive. I don't want us to be the generation who ends up in nursing homes. I want us to use the knowledge that we have, the medical knowledge, and use it so that we can be strong and healthy throughout our lives and not just have our give up and have our children take care of us. Unfortunately, we are getting, uh, <clears throat> by following the advice that we've had in mainstream medicine, we've all gotten more obese, we've gotten sicker, and uh, this has not been happening. <laughs> has not been happening uh, for us using just mainstream medicine. Um, but we know that there are many, many studies and many people who have proven to me that this all has is working uh, throughout my 22 years of uh, providing testosterone for both men and women. And I see it. Seeing is believing. I watch patients get healthier as they uh, get their testosterone back as they then follow. Testosterone gives you motivation. Testosterone makes you feel younger, so you're more likely to follow my advice about eating and exercise and, and taking your supplements and making sure that you get tested for prediabetes, make sure that your bones are thick and that you get your osteoporosis screening. Even men may need that, especially if you've been, been on steroids for any type of medical problem like asthma. So finally, what I've been waiting for all this time, the Australia men's study found that men, I'm going to read this, found that men who continue to produce normal youthful levels of testosterone or replace their testosterone to achieve normal youthful levels lived longer. They were more active um, than men who let aging take its course and drain them of testosterone. Now we've always known this. We see that the outcome of providing testosterone for men, and but I'm a small voice um, trying to educate people who don't want to listen. So at this point, if you're a, a wise person, you're saying, you, you may have two questions, like I do, and I'll answer them for you. Inquiring minds want to know. Why did all the experts tell you that testosterone replacement is dangerous? And why are the experts in the field of men's medicine, like urologists, still advising men to, to not to replace their testosterone as they age? Well, first of all, the belief that prescribing testosterone to men uh, was a bad idea started in the 1950s when medical studies weren't like they are now. Medical studies then just took a few people, you proved your point, and you got a Nobel Prize. Actually, the guy that said that testosterone caused prostate cancer had a study of three, count them, three people, three men. They had all had prostate cancer before. So they aren't three men off the street who are healthy and just aging and need testosterone. These are three men who had prostate cancer before, and they didn't treat it back in the 50s. Their treatment wasn't as good as it is now. And so these three men were then given testosterone to see if that caused a recurrence. Two men dropped out of the study for some reason. One man stayed in the study, and he had a recurrence of, testos of, excuse me, of prostate cancer. A one-man study. That's the beginning of when doctors believed that testosterone caused prostate cancer. Now, they told us this in medical school. We never questioned it. They told us this in residency. We never questioned it, and neither did any of the other doctors. We didn't go back and see why they said it, because testosterone was thought to be only a man's hormone. It was thought that testosterone replacement as men get older and they're more at risk for prostate cancer would be a bad thing. Now we know 
truly know that low testosterone is more of a risk for prostate cancer than normal or high testosterone. So this whole thing was based on a bad study done 50, more than 50 years ago, and <clears throat> 70 years ago, and it caused everyone to just keep telling younger doctors and people and patients that it was bad. We then developed this also a um, dislike for testosterone because it was misused by athletes. Testosterone should be given to aging men who have low testosterone. It should not be given to young men who make their own testosterone, have good testosterone levels, and want to achieve a better anabol anabolic muscle mass. So they take extra testosterone, which just replaces their own testosterone. It's not even testosterone. It's androgens. It's from the adrenal gland. It is a different substance than pure testosterone. And when young men do this and give themselves a super level of testosterone, it is not good for their own production of testosterone. It shuts that down. It shuts down their sperm production. Um, it is not good for them because basically it's cheating in sports. So cheating in sports became equivalent with the word testosterone. And testosterone became the word that really meant <clears throat> testosterone is made from from the uh, ovaries of women and testicles of men, but androgens, which is the big, the big name over all of what we call male producing hormones, they come from the adrenal gland. Only testosterone comes from the testicle. So we've ha had this, instead of saying everything's an androgen and testosterone's a specific hormone, that comes from the testicle, we've said everything is an androgen and so is testosterone and they're interchangeable, they're not. So don't believe it. I want to stop people saying testosterone is a terrible thing, testosterone can hurt you. Test testosterone is what keeps us young. Both men and women, it's what keeps us young, it keeps us sexually active, it keeps us healthy, it keeps our, our muscles good, it keeps our bones thick, it keeps our brains working, our immune system working. Honestly, if there was one hormone of all the hormones that we have to keep us young, that would be it. Testosterone even stimulates the production of growth hormone. So you can say, oh, growth hormone makes us younger. Well, that's because testosterone pr stimulates the uh, production of growth hormone, which is kind of a twofer as far as I'm concerned. So what have we done? We have demonized or, or um, made testosterone to be a bad thing, and we have stopped men from getting it when they need it, when they have um, impotence, when they have loss of muscle mass, when they have loss of brain function, when they have all of the diseases of aging, diabetes, heart disease. All of these things have a tie to a low testosterone level as men age. And for some reason, since we've demonized testosterone, we won't give it back to men. Well, now we should be giving it back to men. Now we have a, a study that was actually sent out to people who aren't doctors to tell people that testosterone is actually okay. So that's one reason why everybody says testosterone is bad. It's just not. It got a bad rap or a bad reputation. The second question you should ask is, why are the experts in the field of men's medicine, urologists, still advising men not to replace their low testosterone as they age? This is not just your doctor's fault, although your doctor should be keeping up with all the research, but they only read their own journal, their urology journal, and they read what they're fed by their overreach, this, this it's like a government of doctors. So a urology college tells the publishers of their uh, journal what to put in it. And urologists are trained surgeons. That's what urologists are. They're not medical doctors. They're not into medicines and hormones to treat anything. They're 
surgeons. So they start their, their life as medical students who then become surgery residents. They go to five years of surgery residency, and then they go to urology residency after that. Nowhere in there is hormone, hormone replacement, testosterone replacement, anything about endocrinology, anything about any of those things. It is all about surgery. So if you're a surgeon, by the way, if you don't want surgery, don't go to a surgeon for, an, for advice. Go to somebody else to give you advice about whether you need surgery or not. If you go to a surgeon, you'll get surgery. So urologists are always looking to do surgery, which involves taking out a prostate or doing something, a biopsy in the prostate, things like that. They're not into giving you testosterone. That is not what they're trained to be. They are trained based on surgery. So the American College of Urologic Surgery, as I said, surgery, is exactly what it is. So they're concerned about cancer. They're concerned about treating cancer that they already have. Prevention is not high on their list. So that's another reason you don't hear about testosterone being good from urologists. And they, you know, they should be the expert in men's health. Now, there's a, third, there's a third thing inquiring minds might have. And if you're a conspiracy theorist, I've heard this from many of my patients, they jump to the conclusion that, and, and I'm not denying this, it could possibly be true, that both the practice of medicine, the business of pharma, pharmaceuticals, and the government uh, achieve monetary benefit from keeping all of us sick, limiting our longevity, because after we're 65, we're considered a drain on society. We just take, you know, we retire, we take money out of society, which is the money we put into, into Social Security and into Medicare, but we're taking money out. So that makes us a drain on the whole system and all of the uh, people in, a, in our society. But, and that would make it more advantageous for us not to be healthy. If you're a conspiracy theorist, you might think of that. I have been asked that by many of my patients. However, it's just a theory. But this study that links low testosterone, there's a second study that links low testosterone to mortality. So not only do we get in the same week, we get the Australian study that says men with high testosterone or good, good youthful levels of testosterone live longer, healthier lives. We also have a study that's a different study in the Annals of Internal Medicine that says that low testosterone increases your mortality, increases your chance of dying. I mean, I've had the perfect week. <laughs> Finally, all the things that I know to be true, both physiologically, medically, and by doing research. I know these things are true, and I've known them for a long time, and I'm giving you this information so you can now go to your doctor and say, hey, testosterone's not bad. I need testosterone to feel better. Test my levels. And by the way, the levels they have on your lab sheet aren't normal, youthful levels. They're low. Who gets their testosterone tested? Old men. So they have a level that is basically old men normal. Well, that's not healthy. Healthy is, in total testosterone is 400 to 1,500. That's normal, youthful levels between the ages of 20 to 40, and that's what you should be trying to achieve. Free testosterone is really the key. Free testosterone is the active part of your testosterone that actually works for you, and it is how we it is parallel to your symptoms and to your health. So if you have a low free testosterone, that's even more important than having a low total testosterone. Low free testosterone is less than 129, and that is nanograms per deciliter as I, uh, in terms of units. 129 to 350 is what we try to achieve with replacement, and that's what men feel healthy and good in that range. They say men can feel good at 34, which I've never seen a guy that felt good at 34. So those are just, those numbers really don't correlate with young, healthy men. Sad. 
However, now you may understand the fact that your doctor didn't like testosterone. He bought into the system or she bought into the system and believed what her older uh, residents and the doctors before them all told them. But now we have new information, and the new information is you can be healthy by taking testosterone, and you can live longer, and you can have a better, more productive life. So why don't you go for it? Thanks for listening. I'm really happy that this came out. Good for us, good for you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.